Discover the healthier you with a range of programs from healthy living detox, yoga and fitness, cooking with raw, vegan and vegetarian foods, and so much more for your mind, body and soul. Invest in yourself. Join now and enjoy 20% off our lifestyle programs. Live well with Santosa. Visit santosapuket.com. Rocktober. All of your rock favorites in a two-hour foot stomping show at the Underwood Art Factory. Long live rock and roll. <laughs> The investigation of the murders of David Miller and Hannah Witheridge on Kotau on September the 15th have become a big international story, in many ways a much bigger story than the actual news of the murders. Firstly, there was the early delays in the hours and days after the discovery of the two bodies, the security of the crime scene and potential pollution of evidence. The false leads, potential suspects being able to leave the island, indeed leave the country. Then, as time passed, the pressure on Thai police to come up with a plausible motive and arrest suspects was flagged in the Thai and overseas press. Eventually, after weeks of criticism, two 21-year-old Burmese workers on the island, who had been there all the time, were taken into custody, questioned and formally arrested. They've also since allegedly confessed to the crime. What followed can only be described as a traditional and social media circus. Even the British and Myanmar ambassadors were dragged into the mess and have made formal approaches to the Thai authorities to inquire into the investigative process. One of the strands of their inquiries about the case relate to allegations from human rights groups of torture being used to coerce the confessions from the two Burmese suspects. The more the Thai police tried to explain their actions, the more the holes in some of the alleged evidence seemed to spring leaks. In what can only be described as a modern investigative intervention, or perhaps just a nuisance to the proper investigation, a Facebook site has been established, poking holes in much of the logic in the case against the accused, without of course any hard data. The site, CSILA, has already amassed a staggering 220,000 followers and is being strongly followed by a majority Thai audience, although there's plenty of English translation as well. Clearly, the Facebook site isn't aware of all the evidence and were not witness to the questioning of suspects of much of the detailed investigation. But in a massive conspiracy theory, right or wrong, the site's engaged a lot of people who genuinely feel that the two Burmese 21-year-olds are scapegoats for the real killer or killers. Now, some of the issues covered in the site cover things like the sheer difference in size between the male victim, who was 190 centimetres, and the tiny alleged attackers, even by local standards, the two 21-year-olds are quite small. The alleged murder weapon, a garden hoe, left similar puncture wounds on the victim and one of the early suspects who has since fled Thailand. And the actual puncture wounds inflicted on the victim appear to be very similar, not the random strikes from a garden hoe. There are also questions about the male victim's mobile phone, a crucial piece of evidence for the police. Photos and video in the days leading up to the event seem to suggest the victim was using a different sort of phone. Why did the authorities use a food store proprietor as the translator during questioning? That's another one of the allegations made on this website. There's plenty of other conjecture and graphic photos if you're into forensics. This Facebook site, CSILA, has drawn criticism from local authorities and perhaps pushed the first appearance of the alleged attackers ahead to as early as tomorrow. The website, change.org, has raised a petition that so far has gathered 27,000 signatures calling for an independent investigation. And Thai TV station PBS have also been openly critical of the investigation. Clearly, the Thai police want to close down the conjecture and chatter about this case on this and other media platforms. There's no doubt that the court case of these two Burmese workers, under the scrutiny of foreign embassies, human rights groups, social media and an engaged world press, will be a real test of Thai justice in 2014. An open and transparent court case will do a lot to repair the fragile relationship between the Thai way and the need for tourists to flock back to the kingdom. Thanks for joining us on Phuket News TV.
Come and join Phuket's finest health club. Meet with like-minded individuals who want to improve their health, happiness, strength and self-esteem. Club members also enjoy social club parties, the world's best fitness equipment and internationally qualified staff. RPM Health Club, where you belong.